Hi everyone, and welcome to Learn Neuroradiology. My name is Brent Weinberg, I'm a neuroradiologist. Today we've got some exciting new content. We're gonna be talking about spine tumors. Particularly, we're gonna take a look at some cases and have a case-based approach to spine tumors. We're gonna take a location-based approach where you first think about the location that the tumor is arising from, and then you use that to hone in your differential. So without further ado, let's get into the cases. So this lecture is going to be the first in a multi-part lecture talking about spine tumors and spine lesions. In this video, we're going to go over the location-based approach and how to use the location of the lesion to help formulate your differential. I want to first give a big shout out to my former colleague and friend, Michael Hoke. He helped me with a lot of these slides, and some of these cases have been kind of handed down from other people. I've tried to give credit to those people where possible. I want to also give a major shout out to John Lowe, who came up with one of the drawings that we use to help differentiate uh, the locations of these lesions. And you're going to see that in a little bit. I thought about redrawing it, but I really wanted to give him a shout out because this is really something that's important and has been handed down over time. You'll see that in just a second here. So when we're approaching this, we have to think about a couple of key questions. We want to think about why is the location of a lesion important? We want to think about what are the possible locations? And we want to think, how does that affect your differential diagnosis? And by the end of this video, I want you to have a reasonable answer to these questions. So the location-based approach is really depending on the fact that the spine is an extension of the CNS. So it's an extension of the brain in many ways. And we're going to ignore bone lesions for the most part for this lecture, but uh, we'll talk about those another time. But in general, the same diseases affect the spine that affect the brain. So if you think about the spinal cord, it is essentially an extension of the brain parenchyma. The CSF space in the brain is similar to the, or in the spine is similar to the basal cisterns, the CSF spaces in the head, and the dural and epidural space are essentially continuous. And so the same kinds of processes will affect both the CNS in the brain and in the spine. So if you can identify that location, that's really gonna help in your forming your differential. And so here we're gonna take a look at a picture and we're gonna think about, uh, I'm gonna show you how those lesions are classified. And so there's a couple of different classifications, like the first is intramedullary. And so that's in the spinal cord. And those are by definition intradural because the entire spinal cord is intradural. So if you have a lesion and it looks like it's coming from the spinal cord, that's an intradural intramedullary lesion. Now, if you have something, the dura is here and kind of contains the CSF, it's the sac that contains everything there. If you have something that is inside that dura, but outside of the spinal cord, that's called an extramedullary lesion, but it's still intradural. So that gives you intradural extramedullary lesion. If it's outside of this demarcated area, then it's an extradural lesion, and uh, that kind of includes everything else. Um, and so this is a simple approach to kind of figuring out where your lesions are located. And uh, the CSF is by definition intradural and extramedullary. So these are the kind of spaces you're looking at and how to think about these lesions as you move forward. Like I said, the whole world, the neural foramina, the bones, everything else in the body is, is extradural. Now this is uh, the drawing that I gave a shout out to Dr. Lowe. Uh, this is a scan of, a, of kind of a drawing that was made with markers, but I think it really captures what's going on here. And rather than redrawing it, I, I thought this really is a great, uh, a great way of kind of capturing what's going on. This is a normal spinal cord, and he's, he's smiling there. You've got the brain here. He's up in the attic of the house, and uh, his, the spinal cord is kind of coming down, and this is the spinal canal. If you look at it in the axial plane, you should have a fecal sac, uh, that's surrounded by the dura, and the cord should have a normal contour in the middle. If you get something in the spinal cord, however, the body starts to get uh, expanded here, and what you'll see is the whole spinal cord is fatter, and you, uh, when you look at it on an axial contour, you have a thicker contour, and it's going to be continuous with the rest of the spinal cord. If you have a lesion that is within the dura, but outside of the spinal cord, what you're gonna see is the spinal cord displaced to the side. You see here's a lesion that's pressing the spinal cord uh, to the left of the image here. You see on the axial image, you can see it's displaced to the side, but the dura is still intact here. So this is what an extramedullary intradural lesion looks like. Finally, if you have a lesion that is extradural, it's coming from outside, you'll often be able to see the displacement of the dura 
and the cord itself as it's displaced, you'll see on a coronal image, for instance, it will look like this, like the dura is displaced to the side. It's causing displacement of the spinal cord. And you can use the location of those spaces to help inform your differential. Now, this location-based approach requires you to try to decide where it's centered and then use a differential that's always driven by the location. Now, you can't always tell, but you can give it a good shot. Now, we're going to talk about this more in the later videos, but for your intramedullary lesions, the most common lesions are primary cord tumors, astrocytomas, and ependymomas. For your extramedullary intradural lesion, your most common lesions are schwannomas and meningiomas. And finally, for extradural lesion, probably the most common thing is metastases arising from the bones. Then you maybe think about other things like schwannomas. So those are the most common things. So we think about back to the questions we had at the beginning of this video. Why is the location important? The location is important because the differential is very different based on where the location is. There are three key possible locations. You have the intramedullary lesions in the spinal cord, intradural extramedullary lesions or those inside the dura but outside the cord, and extradural is everything else. And the way that affects your differential is the differential depends on the normal structures in that location. Most of the time your lesion is going to be arising from a normal structure in that location. So just be aware of that and that will help shape your differential. Now in the upcoming videos, we're going to cover the more step-by-step -step differential using these locations. We're going to talk about common mimics and pitfalls. We're going to look at a few other things, including how to differentiate benign and pathologic fractures of the spinal vertebral bodies. We're going to take a quick look at some of the cystic lesions that can occur in the spinal canal as well. With that, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to encourage you to go back and check out the rest of the videos on the YouTube channel as well as learnneuroradiology.com. I'm also going to encourage you to come back, check out the later videos, which are going to cover those topics in greater detail. And hopefully you can learn a little bit with us about spine tumors, how to come up with an intelligent differential, and how to differentiate them based on their imaging findings. Thanks for tuning into the video. If you enjoyed, uh, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel so that you're alerted anytime new videos come out. Thank you.